Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life with your host, Linda Lang. Hi, this is Linda Lang from ThoughtChange.com. Every now and again, I have a client show up who has a spirit attachment or some type of experience with the paranormal. So today I have two professional intuitives, Ron Carlson and Tony K. Schneider to chat about their perspective and share some of their experiences with us. Welcome. Thanks so much. It's great to be here. It is. So if people have an experience with the supernatural, can we start this conversation by deciding what a ghost is, what a haunting is, or what the other possibilities are? Where I try to start is first reminding myself that experiencing energy and the energy worlds, that's natural. That's where I start. And then I ask, is this energy I'm experiencing something that used to be associated with a living being? And if yes, I more typically might call that a ghost or a disembodied spirit. If it seems to me that, yes, I'm experiencing energy, but I don't know that this was actually ever associated with a human being, then it could be a number of different things. It could have been manufactured, or it, it could be some other energy creature that's out there, uh, like an elf, like, like a gnome. It could also be a history loop. Ron, what do you mean by manufactured? By manufactured, if, if two people deal with each other over a period of time, it's not unusual that they manufacture some energy in between the two. It could be, hopefully, uh, a loving energy of endearment. And the two of them see each other, and this energy just starts going whippy and refreshes them with all this sentiment. If they're two people who have been at odds with each other, Say it's an unsatisfactory work situation and the boss has been working your nerves for several years now. And you even seeing them in the hall starts bringing up, right? There could be an energy that was manufactured over time, right? It's not from the, the spirit or the energy bodies of a person. But it can have, a, can have an impact on people if they're open to it. So it's almost like a relationship between two or more people creates a morphogenic field and takes on a life of its own? Yeah. And I like that you said life of, a, uh, of its own. Has one of the rules in, in my view about living on this planet, one of the rules for things is they're supposed to try to live as long as possible. You try not to die. So if you, if you corner even a mouse, it will ferociously fight to stay alive. In my experience, the same is true about these uh, energies. They try to stay alive too. And if it's a lower frequency, energy, its food is going to be lower frequency food. And it will try to engender human reaction on the frequency that suits it. And there's a really big one that Tony and I like to talk about. Fear. Fear is a big one. Fear can manufacture so much energy and you think you've got a ghost or a spirit or a ghoul or something in your presence and you're trying to exercise it, but it's actually something that's been manufactured from your fear. And, and spirits and energy, the lower vibration ones, the lower frequency ones will feed off of fear. And the more afraid you are, the more they come up. 
since I was a child, I saw this shadow man always standing in a doorway and it scared me all the time. He followed me around decades and decades throughout my life, followed me until um, after I had kids, I was sleeping one night and this energy woke me up and I was sleep deprived because I had two small kids. I was so angry that I yelled at it and I said, get out, leave me alone. And I was just furious. I've never seen it since. Something can be manufactured from a fear or disappointment or dread or anger, but you can also get rid of it with a really strong emotion and a really strong belief and that you don't want it anymore. For me, there was no doubt. I was so angry. I wanted it gone. And when I yelled at it, it took off and it went away. And that's one way to get rid of something that you're afraid of um, that feels like it's around you and following you around or wreaking havoc because you most likely have manufactured it somehow and brought it in. And if you can get rid of it, then that's how you do it by just absolutely believing I'm empowered. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to yell at it. And what if it is an actual ghost? My, my parents are both deceased. And um, after my mother passed away in 96, I, I kept seeing her. I kept seeing her. She would appear to me. And she was a younger woman and just kept appearing and appearing. And it was like she wanted to tell me something, something that she wanted to get out. And I was sitting there. I remember sitting there with my young son in my father's basement uh, in the room down there. And my mother appeared to me and she told me, you need to go into the storage place and pull back this box. And there's something in there for you. And I'm like, what is going on? I had no idea what she was talking about. So I go back there and I pull it out and it's a box full of my baby things, you know, little shoes, little diaper pins, stuff like that. And so for that, she came back as a spirit to tell me something very specific. And then after that, she came a couple more times and I asked her, do you want to move on? Are you ready to move on? And she says, almost. And she's like, I've got this. Don't worry. I can move on when I'm ready. And then when she did, she appeared to me in a different form, almost like a spirit guide or, or you know, a guide around the, you know, part of my divine team. So she came to me because there was a reason. And I found, and I know Ron can um, attest to this too, I have found that a lot of the ghosts will come because there's something that needs to be done or they need some help moving on yeah. or something to go forward. And after my dad passed, I saw him sitting in this little chair, like deer in headlights like this, just yeah. terrified. And there's this door that opens and his mother comes in who's deceased and she gets him by the hand and she lifts him up and she takes him through the door with the light and off they go. And so I didn't have to help cross anyone over. It was already in the process, but I was, I was blessed to be able to see that. So for a lot of things people think of as ghosts, sometimes they just need a little bit of help. They just need a little help being moved on or ask them, is there something I can do for you? Mm -hmm. Is there somebody you need me to tell something to? And that's where that goes with ghosts. So you did make a really good point, Tony, in that not all spirit encounters are ghosts, that they can be loved ones that just come for a visit or actually have a message for you. Right. Totally separate from them needing assistance crossing over. Yes. Yes. And my experience with my mom and my father are good examples of that. Um, my father passed some decades ago. And when he turned up, he was looking fearful. He was looking lost. He was looking unsettled. You know, this, the deer in the headlights that Tony mentioned, I don't know where to go. I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. This kind of sense. So I imagined with him the hallway, the door open on the other end, the light coming out, the, the gentle hands reaching forth and inviting him to come through. 
And I said to him, Dad, there, your next place is, is ready for you. You can walk through there, but you don't have to stay if you don't want to. Meaning, you go there, and at some point, you may get a new assignment. You don't have to stay if you don't want to. In his case, I had to do that three times before he settled into it. And he did not appear like that again. Now with my mom, who very recently passed, how she turned up to me was, was not with the imagery of what she looked like physically. It was more like getting an intuitive knowing with this wonderful uh, energy of settlement and gratitude. Oh, she was delivering a message that all is well. Thank you very much, son. Um, you're, you're loved. There's nothing for you to worry about, you know, between us. And I, I am in this wonderful place. So she was delivering a message and she didn't need further guidance or assistance. She was giving me a gift. Sometimes people encounter a spirit that isn't a loved one that when they're just out and about on their daily life, maybe they've gone to a place that has some kind of trauma or some kind of spirit that's attached to that place. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that someone can do or say if they come across one of those places that, you know, your hair stands up in the back of your neck and you just feel a presence there? Inviting people that may have seen the movie The Shining, right? Right. Tony has actually been to the place the that was the setting for that story. Yeah, so, the Stanley Hotel. Yeah, yeah. Estes Park, Colorado. I'd love right. for you to talk about the energy experience you had there and how you handled it not to become affected. Okay. Um, so it was a, it, it was a purposeful uh, journey up to Estes Park, Colorado to go to the Stanley Hotel, and that's where uh, Stephen King's The Shining was based. Um, and so I went up there. Before I even actually went onto the property, I, I just did some of my own energy clearing work and there are hundreds of different ways to do that. But I, there are certain things that I do just to protect, really it is protection because you don't know what you're walking into. And I think it's important, especially if you don't know, you know, what is going on in this particular hotel. Everybody says it's so haunted. So protect yourself. It's all right. You can protect yourself and, and put that energy bubble out there and have it so that it's, permeable that the frequency of love comes in and out and nothing low vibrational comes in and you can set that for yourself. So off, you know, if I go walking into my bubble, my husband was, was with, with me. So he was in my bubble too. And I walk in and I'm looking around and I'm going, okay, what's going on? I feel nothing. What is happening here? And only guests were supposed to go upstairs. So the, here, I'm going <laughs> to give you a little hint about myself. I went up anyway, and we snuck upstairs because we wanted to go see the rooms, right? The big rooms, so the shining and all, and see what's going on. We go up there, and honestly, it, it felt more like energetic loops. So I kept seeing a, a woman's spirit walking from one room to the other. So it was just this repetition over and over again. I didn't feel a whole lot going on in the hallways. Uh, the one room that's supposed to be the haunted room didn't feel haunted to me. It was actually the room across the hall that looked like a closet that had a door and a lock on it. And I didn't feel what I was expecting to feel there. I felt a lot of energetic loops of different things going round and round. So we come walking back downstairs and um, there's this cordoned off area that you're not supposed to go into unless you pay the money for the tour. And I look in. And there is this very old um, bar back there. It had the mirror and it had a bar and it had shelves. And I'm looking at it and it looked like there were eyes staring back at me and they were terrified. And it, it was a whole bunch of them. So I said, that's where you all are. So all of the ghosts, the spirits who inhabit that particular hotel 
we're all hiding in this one spot, trying to stay away from all of these humans because they were afraid. So when you know you go someplace and it, it's supposedly haunted, they're probably as afraid of you as you are of them. So I just stood there and just asked them telepathically, is there anything I can do for you all? Is, does anybody need any help? Can I do something for you? And I was completely protected, so I didn't feel like anything was going to get me. And, and one of them came forward and said, no, we're just, we're fine. We live here and we're just waiting for everyone to leave so we can come out again. And I thought that was just really sweet. And I said, okay, I'm going to be here for a little while. If there's anything you need, just let me know. I'm happy to try to help if I can. And I felt completely protected. I felt safe. Um, I felt like I could help if they needed some help. And so the Stanley Hotel has its regular spirit inhabitants, and they are afraid of the humans who come in there. I, I think inside what you said, Tony, is a really important point that I'd like to amplify for a minute. Um, I'm, I'm going to start with my early experience with hauntings. And this was in... Oh, back in the 70s and 80s, I lived in the old section of Denver. And at this point, I hadn't figured out what all this intuition was. I'd been seeing energy since I was two, but I didn't know how to control things. And it got frightening. And I would walk around the, the streets of old Denver, and I could see and feel all of the history that had happened. It, it, it was so intrusive, I was nearly unemployable. But over time, I learned that I do have control. And I began working with you know, my guides, my guidance, and in regular dialogue with them, I learned that they've got my back, as well as my energy connection and, and so forth. And I can tell them to do things for me so that if there's energy in a place that I don't want, I can tell them, send that away, right? I can tell them to guard the house. A few years ago, I was running a psychiatric hospital, okay? And I didn't discover anything beyond stale, musty, thick, old, stagnant energy. I didn't discover anything that still had any activity to it. And I actually didn't discover any loops outside of in the 1880s building, the oldest one. And even those loops were just a, a bit like the movement of people back and forth. There was no anguish. There was no sadness. There was nothing like that. And even if there had been, I wasn't afraid because of the position I'd come to with, uh, with my guidance, that nothing was going to be able to, to get to me or hurt me. So it's, it's kind of making a flip uh, away from fear into trust. I know a lot of people that are concerned even to go to the hospital, afraid that they'll pick up a spirit. I agree with you that having fear attracts energy it doesn't protect you right so if someone does have fear and they haven't established a relationship with their spirit team or their guides how would you recommend that they feel like they have some protection or some support to deal with the space that they're in i've had people call me and say, I'm, I'm in a new space, I'm gonna move in here, or my office is gonna move here, and there's this, some kind of bad juju energy. You know, it's, it's, it's haunted. Every time I sit in the chair, I feel like something's, you know, uh, messing with my hair. I've saged, I've clapped it, I've incensed it, I've run bells, and it still creeps me out going in there, right? Fear, fear. So what I do 
And for a person that's in that situation is you bring up somebody like, like me or Tony or Linda. What I did was I sent my spirit team over to that place and I said, tell it to go away. And if it doesn't want to go away, then it's or else it's going to be demolished. Go away. And in 10 minutes, it was gone. I never set foot in the room. I was 100 miles away from the place, but I wasn't afraid of it. If you're, if you're a person who has no idea about spiritual teams and your spirit guides or working with energy or how to protect yourself or build the bubble around yourself, then uh, there are a couple things that you can do. And what I recommend to some of my clients who are new to all of this is start asking yourself questions that are that you're confident about. You know, everything is 100% about it. You're, you 100% believe it. Like, what is your name? Where do you live? When were you born? What color are your eyes? And just ask yourself things that you can say, yes, I'm 100% positive and confident that that's true. Because that will build up your empowerment. That builds up your confidence level. And what that does is it brings you out of fear, out of doubt, out of worry, out of distrust. And whether you know it or not, your energy will respond to that. It'll respond in kind with more power and more confidence. And you'll stand up straighter and go, yes, I know this is true. It sounds kind of silly and simple, but it really does work to boost you up and boost your confidence so that you you can build an energetic bubble without even knowing that you're doing it. And it also tells your spiritual team that you are you need to be protected and that you are here and you are welcoming their, their energy to come in so that when you walk wow. into a space, that's a little bit weird or icky, or you get like the heebie jeebies or the hair stands up, you know, on your neck, then you just keep saying that to yourself. And then the fear won't have a chance to overcome all of that. I just like to encourage all the listeners so that you know that you do have a spirit team, whether you know it or not, you can always reach out to angels, to spirits, just ask for help. Usually that's all you have to do. You know, you're not alone, whether or not you have met your spiritual team or any of your guides or your angels or um, masters or teachers or loved ones, they're there for you. So all you have to do is ask and ask for the help. Uh, and, and they will come in and they will help you. Both of you talked about energetic loops. So I think of that almost like um, a GIF that, that is an energy pattern repeated over and over again. Is there a spirit that's attached and actually acting out that pattern? Or is it just like an energetic residue. So Ron and I believe that it's an energy echo from a prior times. From my experience, it's just an energetic residue. I haven't really run across one where there was a spirit that you could actually speak to. Personally, I haven't because I've tried. It's like, it's like you said, it's like a, like a gif, just like over and over and over again and one thing after another. So I haven't personally experienced any of those energetic loops that had uh, anything attached to it that needed to be removed. Great fun having you both here. Would you like to share your websites or your contact information? Absolutely. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Um, again, I'm Tony K. Snyder, and my website is www.tonyk.com. Linda, this has just been a great pleasure. If any of your listeners would like some more information about what I get up to, you're welcome to come over to Facebook and the group Passionate Living. So come on over there and you'll be uh, joining a wonderful, positive, growth-oriented community. Also, you can read more about what I'm up to at my website, becomeyourwhynow.com. And we also have a website that we have together and it's called www.intuitive dosamigos.com. You can visit that and learn more about us as well. Great fun. Great fun. Thanks for joining us.
this week on Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. If you enjoy this topic, you might be interested in an earlier podcast called Spirit Encounters, where I share some of my experiences with paranormal. Remember, you can always find us on YouTube, iTunes, Anchor.fm, and on Podcoin, the platform that gives you points for listening to your favorite podcasts. Come visit me at thoughtchange.com and pick up your copy of Learning to Listen. That's it for this week. Bye for now.